Hello, good evening, good morning, and good afternoon, depending on when you get to be watching this particular video. And for those that are watching live, it is a warm welcome to each and every one of you. We are so excited to have you on board this very moment. So now it will be looking at Computer Fundamental, which is a course that is um, coded GST 103. GST 103 is a general course for 100 level students in National Open University of Nigeria. It is a course that is prepared to introduce you into basic things about computer. And knowing that you are coming to a school that is operating um, an e-learning platform, uh, a school that is running based on EduTech is a school that uses technology and composer provisions to deliver its instructions. So it's very, very important that you understand um, how things work when it comes to using computer. At least, you know, the basic at the basic level, you know, you need to be very, very familiar and in tune with everything because your examination your test which is tma and other things you'll be getting to do are all going to be running on computer okay and it's very very possible for you as a new student to not have been exposed to computer so much before now and just in case it happened that this is the first time you're meeting us please try to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So you're listening to the voice of the legit boss. Yes, my name is Okadi K. Fine Chukwu Stewards, the popular known as the boss. I am a coach and a tutor, right? I practically live my life supporting learners. And at this level, and for now, my focus is heavily on students of National Open University of Nigeria. I, you know, have other scope of learners I also have interest in, but majority of those that this video is meant for are those that are already students of Open University of Nigeria. And if you are watching this clip and you have interest in studying in the Open University of Nigeria and you don't know how to go about it or how to start or perhaps you are a new student and you are still struggling with finding your footing and all, you can use the link on the description to shut us up on WhatsApp. And yes, you will get all the support that you need. Now, from the course material, which I am going to be sharing on my screen, you can see that the first topic here is, is what basic concepts basic concept of computer the basic concept so we're going to be summarizing you know majority of the things in this particular unit and if possible if time permits us we can look at some little bit of extras all right i will be heavily focusing on the summary i prepared so we have the link to this summary on the um, in the description. So once you once you get to that um, to that platform, you can access the PDF. That is this PDF that is shared on your screen, all right? If you want for other courses as well, you can reach out to us, all right? And for just a token, it will be prepared for you, all right? So that is that. On that now the first thing that we were made to understand is that computer is fast becoming the universal machine of the 21st century we are currently in the 21st century and computer is becoming very very much accepted i mean is there any resistance against the use of computer anywhere in the world well i'll have to find out because i really don't think um, is a case of people rejecting or embracing computer. Is a, a matter of can they really afford it? So can they afford the luxury? Do they have the knowledge to 
required to run computer. I think that has always been the conversation. That has been the, the struggle. Okay, if you can afford it and you can use it, of course, we would be delighted to because, you know, if you are not making use of computer, you're definitely behind the times, all right? So it is becoming universal. That means all over the world, computer is taking over, all right? Now, today, we cannot say that computer is still confined in laboratories because even in our homes, for me to be running this particular class, I am making use of a computer system and I'm not in the laboratory. So the days of having computer restricted to just one particular kind of environment is far, far, far behind us. So it's become something that we can use remotely in our homes. Even while moving from one place to another, while traveling, I really don't think I can travel these days without having my system all right, if I don't have my system, I have my smartphone, which is also a computer, all right? Now, a computer is basically defined as a tool or machine used for processing data to give required information. A computer is basically defined as a tool or machine used for processing data to give required information. So we use computer to give required information. But before this information can be given, it is very, very important. It is expedient that this information gets processed. So how do they get processed? They get processed through a computer. The computer will work on it. And what is going to work on is the raw data. Okay, easy, easy. Yeah, the raw data, the, the input. You are providing is going to work on it and the result is going to come out as a it's going to the result is going to come out as an output which you can always have as your information all right now data is refers to a fact about a person object or place Example, name, age, complexion, school, class, and height. So if you, if you study deeper, you will get to understand that it is data that the computer needs so as to give you um, information, all right? So examples of data, okay, are uh, the name, name of a person, name of an institution, name of organization, names of places and all, um, age, all right, complexion, school you know these are basically details all right details that are actually true <clears throat> about any given person object or place now the following are the method of data processing so we have manual method mechanical method and computer method so manual method, mechanical method, computer method. So these are the different method of data processing. Okay. The manual method of data processing involves the use of chalk, wall, pen, and the like. So when you are doing when you are, when your set your strength, your human strength is involved. All right. Yeah, you are using your human strength to produce or work on data in order for you to get information okay, you're using the manual method of course manual data processing operations entails considerable manual effort okay your your energy all right yes your physical energy and actions is required the mechanical method data processing involves the use of machines Right, so these machines are typewriters, rolling machines, adding machines, and the like. So you can, on your own, give me more examples of machines. All right, definitely you call them machines because they make use of mechanical energy. All right, so mechanical operations are basically routine in nature. So I want to know what does it mean to be routine in nature when they say routine 
If you know what it means, I would love to read your comments. Routine. What does it mean? All right. You can drop your comments and we will we'll be So drop your comments so that we can check it out. Right, so routine. But I know that when we are doing management, right, we always use words like this. When we are describing the operations of or the activities, let me not use operations now, let me use activities, the job of certain level of managers okay we often say that their work is routine all right so also we say is routine that means that thing has a particular sequence there's a particular way of doing it and you follow that way or that path regularly 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 okay Now, the computer method of carrying out data processing has the following major features. So, we have major features of computer method of carrying out data processing. Remember that we said that there are three major ways of processing data. The first one is what you will call the what? The manual. The second one is what they call the mechanical. And the third one is the computer. So definitely in the computer, that is where you use um, these computer devices, right, to process data. And of course, I told you that for machines, the kind of energy that we make use of, okay, are mechanical. They are not electronic, okay. Yes, but computers use electronic electrical um energy so you just have to you just have to understand that okay So, what are the different features? Here we have the first one. Data can be steadily and continuously processed. So when you are using computer continuously and steadily, you can keep processing um, data. Okay. Number two, the operations are practically not noisy. Unlike machines, machines can be noisy, but not computer. When your computer becomes noisy, there's a problem, right? There is a store where data and instructions can be stored temporarily and permanently. So in a computer, you can store temporarily, you can store permanently. When they say temporarily, for example, when you copy and paste, when you copy, that particular um, content that you copied is stored temporarily. When you boot your reboot your system or when you turn it on and turn it off later, more like you know, you it's gone. So it, it was it was saved temporarily somewhere in the clip um, board. And you know the the main purpose of saving it was just for you to quickly uh, paste it somewhere else where you need it. After some time, it goes, you have to, if you want to paste, you need to go and copy again, all right? But there are other places you store things and they are permanent, okay? This material that I'm sharing with you, when I worked on it, after working on I, I I spent some time to work on it. And when I was done, I saved it. After saving it, I, I came back today to open it. Anytime I want to work with it, I open it. It's already there on my system. 
all right so that is how it works you can save permanently you can save temporarily errors can be easily and neatly corrected all right when there is a mistake when i for instance when i was working on it i was typing it out at some point i will check what i've done look at how it was arranged i'll feel like you know i don't really like how it's looking and i have strength and time to do the correction i will quickly do it and by the time you are done it looks neat unlike when you are doing it manually let's assume you are using a piece of paper to write if you make a mistake you cancel it becomes rough you know you might even have to condemn that particular sheet and get something plain and start all, all, um, um, all afresh so that is how it is all right output reports are usually very neat decent and can be produced in various forms accuracy and reliability are highly enhanced so these are different things you need to know about computerized method of data processing characteristics of a computer one speed two accuracy three storage four automatic five reliability six flexibility so these are the different qualities of a computer Then, computer system is made up of hardware and software, all right? When we say speed as a, as a character of computer, it means it's very fast. Accuracy means it's always correct, okay? The chances of you getting an error in computer are very, very low. And when there is an error, it could be that you imputed something wrong. The storage is can keep your data, it can keep your information automatic. Sometimes, even when you are not there, you can program the computer to show that even when you're not there, it's working. So it's just that's wonderful. Reliability, you can depend on it. You can always trust on your computers. All right. Yeah. Correctly, now we are having uh, a situation whereby some group of people are really challenging uh, how the last election. How the last election, okay, that we had national uh, presidential election for Nigeria was um, handled, and they they are really challenging it in court. And some of the things that we know we are going to be bringing as evidence are based on computer provisions. Okay, so we can always trust that this will not really fail us. Okay. The flexibility is can really be changed. It can be, you know, you can you can work on your system, adjust it one or two ways in order for it to give you a different outcome. Okay, it's not rubber standard. This is how it's gonna be. So those are the different aspects of the computer. Okay. Now computer system is made up of hardware and software. So there's always this part of the computer that you can see, you can touch, you can handle, and there are the other part of it. That is where a lot of, you know, let's say, well, preparing the hardware of a computer also takes some genius, some form of gen genius, gen genuineness, or greatness, or, you know, depth. Yeah, we know, but the technicality of it all is in the software. So, you will, for you to click something and something else will open, you know, for you to enter a command and it will respond. There is something behind the scene that is working. So those part of the computer that we really cannot see, but we know that yes, they are there to help us out in carrying out, uh, you know, our tasks on the computer system are what you know as a software. So there is a software, there is a hardware. 
and they are the two main parts of the computer or the two main systems that a computer is made up of right so the computer system is made up of the hardware and the software the computer hardware comprises of the input unit processing unit and the output unit that is the hardware and under each of them we have different parts in the inputs you have parts like the keyboard you have parts like the microphone and the likes okay in the outputs okay there are also um So in the um, in the processing, that's the central processing unit for you, okay. Now all the electronic components in it. PC are mounted on a piece of fire glass, which is called the motherboard, right? Yes. So, all the components in a PC right a small battery powers a clock to keep track of the time when the pc is turned off right so all the electronic components in a pc are mounted on a piece of fiber called the motherboard and we have a small battery that powers a clock to keep track of the time when the pc is turned off now, ROM stands for read only memory. Read only memory. Read only memory. Read only memory. Okay, why RAM stands for random access memory? So please, it is good that you don't forget this. Okay. So, read only memory. ROM is a type of non volatile memory using computers on that electronic device. Data stored in ROM cannot be electronically modified after the manufacture of the memory device. It's a type of storage containing non volatile permanent data that normally can only be read, not written to. ROM contains a programming that allows a computer to start up or regenerate each time it is turned on. RAM, on the other hand, stands for Random Access Memory. Okay. And um, RAM is volatile memory that temporarily stores the files you are working on. So RAM, okay, which is RAM, stores temporarily. Right. So you can see this. when a computer is switched on and, and, and it only, um, is switched on and running a program, RAM is used for purposes such as holding the program and is data. All right. So that is RAM. Now, fiber glass can conduct electricity. True. All right. Yes, it can conduct electricity. When they say it can conduct electricity, that means electricity can pass through it all right the earliest pc we are equipped with a cpu from intel corporation called 8088 cpu stands for central processing units the speed of cpu is measured in megahertz all right the alpha numeric key can be likened with the conventional typewriter key and the numeric keys contains a set of is required for running or entering number digits all right so the numeric keys is used for entering numeric just numbers all right when the shift key is pressed the capital letters on the alphanumeric keys are archived 
when the shift key is pressed, the capital letters on the alphanumeric keys are activated. Sorry. Okay. And why? How is this possible? It is only possible when you go to the cap lock. If the cap lock is when the cap lock is turned off, that is when the shift key we activate capital letters. If the cap lock is turned on, the shift key we, we activate small letters. And LLU is the acronym for arithmetic and logic unit. The processing unit is made up of arithmetic and logic units, control units, and the main memory. The main memory, also known as the primary memory, is made up of the read-only memory, ROM, and the random access memory, RAM. Okay. <clears throat> computer software are the series of instructions that enable the computer to perform a task or group of tasks as I just told you earlier right and series of program linked together make up a software why is program itself is made up of a group of instructions to perform a task right so programs make up a software okay so So, um, a program provides a computer with coded instructions for automatic performance of tasks. So, mind you, automatic performance of tasks. You can see here they told us to perform a tax. Once, look at all, it is coded, coded instruction. So, this instruction is only is coded. That means it is prepared in a way that it has a particular output is going to um, push this computer to give out all right so if that if, if the input is not properly brought in all right definitely there will be an error it will not give you what you expect rather right? they say it is cool that this is prepared specifically for that particular device and in a way that is going to give out a particular um, desired output, All right? That's what they call it, a program. And when we have a series of programs linked together, then we have a software. Now, computer programs could be categorized into the following. We have system software, utility software, application programs, okay? Now, the different categories of personnel that operate the computer are called computer users. The different categories of personnel that operate the computer are called computer users. All right. The, range, the, the computing environment ranges from what? Building, housing, um, building, housing, the other um, elements of the computer system, namely the computer and the users, the furniture and other devices. So that I know that's what the computer environment is made up of the the um the the area, the environment is the area, the spaces, the space around the computer, the people there, other um devices, structures around the system that you know help the system in you know performing its duties. So we have printers, you have, which are all somehow connected to the computer. You have decks, furnitures, the air conditioners, you know, all these things are all in the computer environment. Don't forget as well, um, the person operating the computer. The UPS stands for uninterruptible power system supply. We have most of these computers are digital. The first generation electric computers took place between 1937 to 1953. The earliest attempt to build an electronic computer was by J.V. Atanasov, a professor of physics and mathematics at Lower State in 1937. ENIAC is the acronym for Electronic Numerical Integrator and Computer. 
the first general purpose programmable electronic computer was the electronic and numeric integrator and computer ENIAC. Um, yeah, this is the first general purpose. So when we are talking about um, the generation of computer, that is when all this began to come in. Okay, so have first generation according to the cost material, please. Um, other materials will tell you other things all right you know when it comes to the year when the fourth generation started to when it ended when second generation started to when it ended so uh but for the sake of your examination and your tma just work what they have in the course material okay and the first generation um lasted between um 1937 to 1953 all right and then we have this particular person, J.V. Atanasov, okay, who happens to be a professor of physics and mathematics at Lower State. He was a, he has the earliest, okay, the earliest attempt to build an electronic computer. Okay, um, electronic numerical integrator and computer was built by J. Prespa, Eskert, and John V. Mochley. Um, Ed Vac was, was able to run orders of magnitude faster than ENIAC. And by the 19th, um, 1950s, programmers were using a symbol notation known as language assembly. Okay. The first computer programs were written out in machine, um, in, written out in code, in machine codes. Okay, so um, this is what you're going to understand better when you start talking about um, um, okay, so if you start looking at computer um, language, right? So we're going to look at all those ones later on. But, but um, for now, that will be the much we are going to take. So please, let's try to be reading our course materials. When we have this, it's just a kind of um, a summary of what we have studied. And then we can always engage with me to the comment section. I will be there to see your response and... Um, know where I need to work on where you guys need me the most and don't forget to always reach out compensate us um, every way that you can um, share this particular platform if you want to join my membership um, community you want me to have you amongst those that I will be um, mentoring you know guiding through can always come around for your question and stuff just get ready i'm going to uh, cre create um a community for you guys i will present um it for you so that you can be part of it i'm talking about those that are new students if you're an existing student and you don't know about my membership community wow well Maybe when I'm launching that of this semester, you can join. All right, you can always join. Um, it is just a way of me creating um, a community of people that that I, I have like minds, people that understand me, people that connect with me um, very well, people that I can call my own tribe, and. And it's also a way of me actually giving back, you know, to the world, giving back to the school. Of course, the school has really done a good job of helping me to some very, very large extent. And the best I can do is also try as much as possible to um, use my experience to support those that are coming behind me. All right. Um, but, of course, I really cannot be there for everybody. So, one of the ways of me trying to see that I I sieve out 
the how do I put it now? The audience from customers or from clients, oh no, from the crowd separating the 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 the, the, the disciples from the multitude, you know, picking those that I mean for me from the crowd is like putting all these structures in place so that those that actually know that they need me and I'm there for them can, you know, take the leap and join the winning side. Okay. So as I said, that's the much you can take. All the links that you that you need that will help you will always be provided in the description. So just find um, a way to connect and of course if your experience with us is something that you really enjoy don't forget to share the word or share the word and broadcast it so that people can always be a participant okay in the good things that you are enjoying so this has been the voice of the legit boss msc every other boss out there is nothing but just a counterfeit Tell them and let them know. God bless you.